Section 4 of Poems by Currer, Ellis, and Acton Bell by Charlotte, Emily, and Anne Bronte. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Recording by Libby Gone. Francis by Charlotte Bronte. She will not sleep for fear of dreams, but rising quits her restless bed, and walks where some beclouded beams of moonlight through the hall are shed. Obedient to the goad of grief, her steps, now fast, now lingering slow, in varying motion seek relief from the humanities of woe, wringing her hands at intervals, but long as mute as phantom dim, she glides along the dusky walls, under the black oak rafters grim. The close air of the grated tower stifles a heart that scarce can beat, and though so late and lone the hour, forth pass her wandering, faltering feet. And on the pavement spread before the long front of the mansion grey, her steps imprint the night-frost hoar, which pale on grass and granite lay. Not long she stayed where misty moon and shimmering stars could on her look, but through the garden archway soon her strange and gloomy path she took, some firs coeval with the tower, their straight black boughs stretched o'er her head. Unseen, beneath this sable bower, rustled her dress and rapid tread. There was an alcove in that shade, screening a rustic seat and stand. Weary, she sat her down and laid her hot brow on her burning hand. To solitude and to the night some words she now in murmurs said, and trickling through her fingers white, some tears of misery she shed. God help me in my grievous need, God help me in my inward pain, Which cannot ask for pity's meed, Which has no license to complain, Which must be borne, Yet who can bear hours long, days long, A constant weight, the yoke of absolute despair, A suffering wholly desolate? Who can forever crush the heart, Restrain its throbbing, curve its life, Dissemble truth with ceaseless art, With outward calm mask inward strife. She waited as for some reply, The still and cloudy night gave none. Ere long, with deep-drawn trembling sigh, Her heavy plaint again begun. Unloved I love, unwept I weep, Grief I restrain, hope I repress, Vain is this anguish fixed and deep, Vainer desires and dreams of bliss. My love awakens no love again, My tears collect and fall unfelt, My sorrow touches none with pain, My humble hopes to nothing melt. For me the universe is dumb, Stone deaf and blank and wholly blind, Life I must bound, existence some, in the straight limits of one mind, That mind my own, O oh, narrow cell, Dark, imageless, a living tomb, There must I sleep, there wake and dwell, Content with palsy, pain, and gloom. Again she paused, a moment of pain, A stifled sob alone was heard. Long silence followed, Then again her voice the stagnant midnight stirred. Must it be so? Is this my fate? Can I nor struggle nor contend? Am I doomed for years to wait, Watching death's lingering axe descend? And when it falls, and when I die, What follows? Vacant nothingness? The blank of lost identity? Erasure both of pain and bliss? I've heard of heaven, I would believe. For if this earth indeed be all, who longest lives may deepest grieve, Most blessed who sorrows soonest call. O oh, leaving disappointment here, Will man find hope on yonder coast? Hope, which on earth shines never clear, And often clouds is wholly lost. Will he hope's source of light behold, Fruition spring where doubts expire, And drink in waves of living gold, Contentment full, for long desire. Will he find bliss which here he dreamed, Rest which was weariness on earth, Knowledge which, if for life it beamed, Served but to prove it void of worth? Will he find love without lust's leaven, Love fearless, tearless, 
perfect, pure, to all with equal bounty given, in all unfeigned, unfailing, sure. Will he from penal sufferings freed release from shroud and wormy clod, all calm and glorious, rise and see creation sire, existence God? Then, glancing back on time's brief woes, will he behold them fading fly, swept from eternity's repose like sullying cloud from pure blue sky? If so, endure my weary frame, and when thy anguish strikes too deep, and when all troubled burns life flame, think of the quiet, final sleep. Think of the glorious waking hour, which will not dawn on grief and tears, but on a ransomed spirit's power, certain and free from mortal fears. Seek now thy couch, and lie till morn, then from thy chamber calm descend, with mind nor tossed, nor anguish torn, but tranquil, fixed, to wait the end. And when thy opening eyes shall see mementos on the chamber wall of one who has forgotten thee, shed not the tear of acrid gall, the tear which welling from the heart burns where its drop corrosive falls, and makes each nerve in torture start at feeling it too well recalls. When the sweet hope of being loved through Eden's sunshine on life's way, when every sense and feeling proved expectancy of brightest day, when the hand trembled to receive a thrilling clasp which seemed so near, and the heart ventured to believe another heart esteemed it dear, when words, half love, all tenderness were hourly heard as hourly spoken, when the long, sunny days of bliss only by moonlit nights were broken, till drop by drop the cup of joy filled full with purple light was glowing, and faith, which washed it sparkling high, still never dreamt the overflowing. It fell not with a sudden crashing, it poured not out like open sluice, no, sparkling still and redly flashing, drained drop by drop the generous juice. I saw it sink, and strove to taste it, my eager lips approached the brim, the movement only seemed to waste it, it sank to dregs, all harsh and dim. These I have drunk, and they for ever have poisoned life and love for me, a draught from Sodom's lake could never more fiery, salt, and bitter be. Oh, love was all a thin illusion, joy but the desert's flying stream, and glancing back on long delusion, my memory grasps a hollow dream. Yet whence that wondrous change of feeling I never knew and cannot learn, nor why my lover's eye congealing grew cold and clouded, proud and stern, nor wherefore friendship's forms forgetting he careless left and cool withdrew, nor spoke of grief nor fond regretting, nor even one glance of comfort through, and neither word nor token sending of kindness since the parting day, his course for distant regions bending, went self-contained and calm away. O oh, bitter, blighting, keen sensation, which will not weaken, cannot die, hasten thy work of desolation, and let my tortured spirit fly. Vain as the passing gale my crying, Though lightning struck, I must live on. I know at heart there is no dying of love and ruined hope alone. Still strong and young and warm with vigor, though scathed, I long shall greenly grow, and many a storm of wildest rigor shall yet break o'er my shivered bow. Rebellious now to blank inertion, my unused strength demands a task, Travel and toil and full exertion are the last, the only boon I ask. Whence then this vain and barren dreaming of death and dubious life to come? I see a nearer beacon gleaming over dejection's sea of gloom. The very wildness of my sorrow tells me I yet have innate force. My track of life has been too narrow. Effort shall trace a broader course. The world is not in yonder tower, Earth is not prisoned in that room, Mid whose dark panels, hour by hour, 
I've sat the slave and prey of gloom. One feeling turned to utter anguish, It's not my being's only aim, When lorn and loveless life will languish, But courage can revive the flame. He, when he left me, went a-roving To sunny climes beyond the sea, And I, the weight of woe removing, Am free and fetterless as he. New scenes, new language, skies less clouded, May once more wake the wish to live. Strange foreign towns astir and crowded, New pictures to the mind may give. New forms and faces passing ever May hide the one I still retain, Defined and fixed and fading never, Stamped deep on vision, heart and brain. And we might meet, time may have changed him, Chance may reveal the mystery, The secret influence which estranged him, Love may restore him yet to me. False thought, false hope, in scorn be banished. I am not loved, nor loved have been. Recall not, then, the dreams scarce banished. Traitors mislead me not again. To words like yours I bid defiance. Tis such my mental wreck have made. Of God alone and self-reliance I ask for solace, hope for aid. Morn comes, and ere meridian glory or these my natal wood shall smile, both lonely wood and mansion hoary, I leave behind full many a mile. End of section four.